Hey everyone, I've recently received some requests to kind of run through the process of fabricating a diagnostic wax up. Um, so, creating this video to give you guys a little bit of insight. Hopefully it's not too long, I'm going to try and make it as brief and simple as possible. Uh, so, first things first, you're going to need InLab to do this as far as I know. Uh, I only know how to do this on InLab. I don't know if Seric Premium would allow you to do this or if you guys have the um, uh, module to create models with the Seric software. Uh, but at least for, uh, for InLab, this is how things are done. Uh, and this is just how I do it. So let's just start in administration. Uh, we've got everything marked as we would. Everything's going to be labeled a crown. Uh, you, you're going to do your scan. And uh, once you get to the model phase, you can see that this is how uh, my preps were done. And uh, I've been asked to kind of display how I virtually prep. So I'm going to show you guys two different methods here. Um, once you've got your scans and uh, you know your pre-op scans and you're ready to prep, uh, in the edit model phase, you can go to replace, and I'll, I'll show you guys that technique first. And this is what I've already done on all these crowns, but we'll go ahead and do it on uh, these two teeth that haven't already been prepped. And you're just going to start going around it, like as if you are marking for a biocopy. I'm just going to go around it, get as much of the tooth as possible, but you're going to leave, you know... Uh, you're going to leave behind that emergence profile. So when you do your crowns, you're going to have a really good um, idea of where they're going to be placed. You're not just kind of randomly throwing crowns on a, on a blank slate. And in, in the model phase, it, it's kind of difficult to maneuver the... Uh, the scans, I don't know why. It's not as easy as it is when you're uh, designing a crown. But we're just gonna go all the way around. And, uh, once we've got everything attached, we'll just leave it there. You can then, you know, edit things after but for the sake of you know this just being an example this is okay and then we're going to click apply and voila uh, you've got your virtual prep and then um, you would just go in mark your margins uh, around you know this area and one thing to note, uh, when you're marking these margins, you don't want to intersect these. So uh, only way you can tell is once you get to the set insertion axis and all the margins are showing, uh, if any of them are intersecting, uh, you won't be able to virtually seat the crowns to print your models. So just uh, keep that in mind when you're marking the margins. So if we were marking you know, this margin, we'd want to ensure that um, the the mesial um, margin of whatever tooth this is isn't intersecting with the distal margin of this tooth. So that's one method. And another method, uh, which I really uh, like, especially for um, cases involving veneers. You're just going to do some veneers. This is a great tool to use. You're going to go to Form, going to click Remove. Okay, so once that's loaded, you're going to want to have the strength amped up to all the way, 100%. Um, it's a lot less strong, uh, you could say, the, the strength um, in, when you're editing the model than it is when you're editing a crown. Because if, you, if you've got the strength for your remove tool at 100 when you're editing a crown, things are going to go quick. But in the model phase, uh, you still have some nice control. So we're just going to start prepping this as if it were a veneer. And you can leave, um, you know, it's, it's, it's almost as if you're, you're manually prepping it. 
there isn't there isn't much difference. This is just your burr in a sense. Just knock that down. Then we can prep it from the facial as well. Just bring it back a little bit. Okay. Then we'll go to smooth to kind of refine everything. I uh, don't want to necessarily leave it all bumpy. So we'll just smooth it out. So once that's done, um, you know, you're ready to go. We can smooth that out a little bit more. But once that's done, you know, you're ready to go. You can now uh, mark your margins on uh, this prep and, you know, design your crown or, or veneer. So either method will work. Um, it's just really preference. If you're doing veneers, I prefer the method on the left. If you're doing crowns, um, as we are here, I'd prefer the method on the right, but it's really um, your preference. So I'm gonna cut the video, and um, when I come back, I'm gonna show you uh, what's next, what we're gonna do in the design phase for the virtual uh, diagnostic wax up. So we're back, and once you're in the design phase, um, you're gonna want to adjust all of your parameters to zero. Uh, you want everything flush with the model as if it were a part of the model. So all of your um, thicknesses, take them down to zero microns. Uh, your spacers, take them down to zero microns. Uh, after that, you're going to adjust morphology to whatever shape you like. I usually leave most of all of my designs at biogeneric, and then you can, uh, from there, use biogeneric variation, which I'm a big fan of. But then you're going to position uh, everything and you're going to fit it to uh, your margins as best as possible so that um, everything's positioned just right. Uh, after that, you're going to go into the edit element. And this case has already been designed. Um, everything that I need on my end was provided by the doctor. So um, great job on their end. Uh, you couldn't ask for any more. Got the portrait photos, uh, the upper or the scan body upper scan is pretty much just the pre-op scan, which is gr a great um, use for as a, as a reference. Uh, received photos, many photos, which help determine the length and proportion uh, of the teeth. And then with one of those portrait photos, I use the uh, 3D face or 3D smile to uh, to kind of give us a better idea, make it a little more predictable what the teeth are going to look like once they're in the mouth. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's not 100% accurate, but it just gives us a good idea of, you know, what we're working with uh, for midline and, and whatnot. But um, once you've got your design where you want it, you, you know, you think, okay, this is good, um, I like this. You're gonna then go into administration. And one thing to note also that I forgot to mention, in the design phase, make sure all of your contacts are green. Make sure they're all green, uh, or even maybe uh, slightly out of contact. You just, you just definitely don't want any yellow or red color showing on the interproximals, because when you go to the, um, the uh, module or the the model creator. Um, I'll, I'll kind of explain that once we get there. But once we're in administration, after you've got the design where you want it and all the contacts are green, uh, you'll then make sure all of these crowns are clicked. 
to every tooth. And you're then going to click, uh, you could either click insert all, uh, I just go through every crown, and then I virtually seat it. And this is how you virtually seat. So insert selected, should instrument geometry be considered? Uh, I typically click no. We now have a virtual diagnostic wax up. Everything's uh, virtually seated, and this is just about ready to print. So from here, you're gonna go to the Start tab in the InLab software, um, go over to Apps, and as I mentioned before, I don't know if this is an option with uh, the CERC software or even the CERC Premium software. Um, this is just how things are done on the lab side. So we're gonna use the, um, the in-lab module uh, for creating models. Um, and you're gonna find that in the app section, as I mentioned, and just go over to um, in-lab model. You're gonna click that. I've already got it opened. And once we get here in uh, prepare, you're pretty much just going to trim the model where you want it. And I've already done that, as you can see. And we're going to skip the design phase. That's more for crown and bridge model work. And you're going to go straight to finalize. And once you're here in uh, finalize, uh, I usually hollow out the model. It saves on printing time. And um, it also just saves on, on material. So I leave it hollow, uh, carve it out, you know, hollow it out. And then with the text label, you can indicate uh, what doctor it's for name of the patient and whatnot. And at this point, it's ready to go. You can then export as an STL. You would then nest it in whatever um, slicer software you're using and then um, send it over to your 3D printer. After that, um, there's a bit more involved as far as um, manufacturing the 3D printed model, but um, that's for another video. This is just how it's done within the software. Uh, if you guys have any questions or want me to go um, more in depth with anything, please just leave a comment or you know feel free to reach out to me via email or whatever whatever it may be. But uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, help you guys out and help you kind of you know figure out how to implement this kind of workflow into your own practice. But for now, that's it, and um, I guess we'll be talking later.